Good day. Welcome to section 8 of Data Network Security 1. Today we'll be looking at sensitive data exposure. Now at the end of this session, one will have to be able to explain sensitive data exposure, what it is, list the types of vulnerabilities that fall into this category and outline how to prevent these types of attacks. Then we will have some explicit sensitive data exposure with autoromutual.com. Of course, with the hands-on when we go to Sakai. So what is sensitive data exposure? Most of the times, programmers or developers and users expose very sensitive data to the public or to when developing. It comes in forms of comments and sometimes neglect of the users. So sensitive information must be correctly handled and secured when developing web applications. So we are talking about robust access control procedures, industry recognized encryption algorithms, and encryption key management. All these are essential layers of data protection. And these and this are used to prevent sensitive data from exposure. Once this data is exposed, then we are saying that the attackers or the hackers get the opportunity to impersonate the user or what we call identity theft. Now, this can happen when data is in transit or even at rest. At rest means that locally if installed on the user's PC. What are the implications? Of course, any sensitive data such as password, credit card numbers, health records, and personal information. Once an attacker gets hold of this document or this data, then the attacker can do anything that pleases him or her. And that's where impersonation comes in, identity theft comes in. Now, sensitive data, for that matter, needs to, developers and programmers need to have enough to protect this data. I mean, enough extra protection in order to secure this sensitive data. Ones need to determine which data is sensitive to, to require extra protection. We are talking about passwords, health records, personal information. All these needs to be protected. They need not be in clear text. So any data that is in form of clear text and needs maximum protection, the necessary protection needs to be given to such data. Now, complex cryptographic algorithms need to be employed. They need to be current and secure. That is the only way to secure sensitive data exposure. Now, what are some of the vulnerabilities with regards to this sensitive data exposure? The first one to look at is missing secure attributes in encrypted session or session cookies. So most of the times we have or the application, web application sets a cookie without a secure attribute, the word secure. We can't find that in the attributes that is given to the web or to the cookie at the point of setting it. Now, since this cookie does not contain the secured word or secured attribute, it might also be sent over the network or over the site during unencrypted sessions. And once that happens, the attacker is able to infiltrate such data and get this sensitive information. So any information such as cookies, session tokens, or user credentials that are sent over the server as clear text messages may be stolen and used later for identity theft. So below we can see that at the last line, there's no secure attributes found it's not present in that line of code. And once this happens, and th th this is coming from a network analysis, so we are talking about Wireshark or any network analysis tool. Once the attacker is able to determine that the secure attribute has not been implemented, then they can chance on this cookie or this session tokens to attack 
the site. Now, another vulnerability that we want to talk about is encryption not enforced. Now, most components of web application could be identified as being present on either hypertext trans uh, transfer protocol or secured hypertext transfer protocol. And any information sent to the server as clear test message as stated earlier on may be stolen. So in addition, several privacy regulations also state that sensitive information such as credentials will also or will always be sent encrypted to the website. So once that is not done, then we are violating this privacy regulation. And, and it is highly recommended that users and developers enforce the use of encrypted connections. So we are looking at the secure socket layers, securing the SSL, and not allow access to sensitive information using unencrypted HTTP. So here we have a login and we realize that both logins have the same, we have both logins interface for both HTTP and HTTPS. Now here the difference will be that despite both have the same inter uh, interface, one is more secured than the other. Yes, HTTPS is more secured than HTTP, the normal HTTP. So you should take note. Now, query parameters used in request once a web application is built. Now, this relates to requests which are sent, of course, over the secure socket layers. And this contains parameters that are transmitted in the query part of your HTTP request, means get, the get query. Now, when this is sent, or when this, when sending this request, the browser history can be used to reveal the URL as we saw in earlier slides or earlier sessions that your URL, some important details can be exposed. And once this is done, now the attacker chance upon it and knows exactly what the user is dealing with and can attack the user. Now due to the sensitivity of encrypted requests, it is suggested that you, you we use HTTP post, and this one comes without the parameters in the URL string. Now, here we have unencrypted view state parameters. If we take a look at the code on top, now, those, that code after the view state, after the equal to, is a token, and that can be decrypted. Now, we have various tools that are used to decrypt that. Now we have the IBM security and code decode two. Now once that part of the code is copied, we can actually see exactly what that is representing. It means that some part of this code can be decrypted. So it's highly important that this part of the data is highly encrypted so that Attackers can chance upon that. Now, this view state parameter is mostly used in ESP.NET, and this is used to manage state control. And it's, it's a base 64 encrypted tool, and as such, it's, it can be easily decrypted. Of course, now we have higher encryption algorithms that are used to encrypt sensitive data. And if this contains sensitive information, I mean the base 64, then it is possible that this can be compromised or corrupted. Now, this parameter could personally contain se sensitive information such as our usernames and password. Now, mostly programmers in terms or in intends to provide comments in their programming um, codes or in their codes. Now, when this happens, sometimes they tend to leave some sensitive information, though commented out, but they still provide some level of information. Many web application programmers use HTML comments, and this helps them debug the application when needed. Now, while adding these general comments 
it's very useful some programmers use or they tend to leave important data so the it may be an old code fragment it may be um, browser user information now if an attacker gets hold of such codes or such uh, html files the attacker can easily look for the application structure and once the attacker gets the structure of your applications and even sometimes very sensitive data with regards to your web app you are you are totally exposed your website is totally exposed and uh, which may help the developer further to further attack the site so it's very important as of course comments are very important in programs but we should keep ses sensitive data which is we should keep commenting sensitive data we should reduce them as far as possible now in this example we we realize that some sensitive information has been provided and commented by the programmer in the source code to my right now this is the source of or the source page of an apply.asp page for instance and this has very revealing comments now once the attacker gets hold of this code is able to see that this is what a user intends to do or this is what a programmer intends to do and for that matter uses this information as a basis of future attacks now another very vulnerable of a vulnerability that is related to sensitive data is cacheable SSL pages. Now, most web browsers are configured by default to cache users' page during use. So sometimes you are provided with a website and, for instance, you've entered your username and password. Then there's a small box that is asking you to tick so that you save your password so that in some subsequent browsing, you don't need to enter the password. Now, these things are being cached. So it means that once you come back to that site, automatically it locks you in. Now, it is recommended to enable the web browser to save any SSL information, since this information must or might be compromised when a vulnerability exists. So we need to desist from such act, and it is recommended to disable caching on all secured socket layers any page that has caching ability needs to be disabled because all pages that contain sensitive data especially pages that requires part of login processes might be hacked we can also add the code pragma no cache to the page and that will help in securing the page now, how do we prevent sensitive data exposure? Of course, we need to encrypt all sensitive data at rest and in transit. At rest is when it's locally stored on our PC. In transit is when it's moving through the network or when we are, the application is in use. Now, it is not advisable to store sensitive data unnecessarily. Discard them if possible. Use strong algorithms and strong keys and, and, and proper key management should be in place. We can consider FIPS 140, which is used as a validation and uh, cryptographic model, right? Now we should ensure passwords are stored with an algorithm, especially designed for password protection, not just any algorithm, but one that is reserved for encrypting passwords. And you should be able to disable automatic completes on forms. Like I said earlier on, once you start filling the form, it automatically tries to guess what you, are, you intend to do. And all these are cacheable uh, procedures. Once they are disabled, you are in, you are in to save your, your website or your web application. Now, so you can visit the Sakai and do lab six, which exploits sensitive data exposure. Now, upon completing this exercise, you will be able to exploit and even investigate some sensitive data exposure with autoremutual.com, our demo 
web application. So visit Sakai, get your hands on these labs and try them out. So in this model, I've been talking to you about what consists, consists of sensitive data exposure, there are different types of vulnerabilities as false into this category and how to even prevent these types of attacks. And of course, when, once we go to atomutual.com in our Sakai, we'll be able to have more hands-on on how to prevent sensitive data exposure. This brings us to the end of session eight. I will see you in section nine.